So the current state of ECW, w, e, e, ECW with WWE right now, that's n n no comparison. <laughs> My TV set is covered with spit, honey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, the mid-90s, you went to WCW. Uh, what are your memories there? Okay, um... When I went to WCW, it was back to Medusa land, and she had taken the WWF belt, something that I had wanted since the time I was little. And Andre the Giant was my godfather, and he said, what is it that you want? And I said, I want the WWF belt. So I was just a really little, little person then, and, um, and everybody's a little person next to Andre. And... Um, and then, in fact, it was Vince Sr. that was running it, and he was still Jean Ferré in Montreal. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, that's all I wanted was to be a lady wrestler and to, to get the WWW, w <laughs> Federation's belt. And um, I wanted better things for women in this sport, and that's why I decided then to go with the mohawk and put the extensions in and go, uh, you know, do something in a world full of caterpillars, in a world full of butterflies, it takes balls to be a caterpillar. Because I got paid for being ugly and ugly acting. I was the female version of my Uncle Mad Dog Vachon. Well, I got to tell you, sitting right next to you, you don't look anything like you did in the uh, on set or uh, wrestling. You're beautiful. Oh, uh, I thank you. It's so nice of you to say that. But it's not true, but it's nice of you to say it. He's, he, he, he's just saying that because he's sitting next to me right now. I, I felt that it was to get... I wanted to get attention from rock and roll magazines, from walking down the street. Any way that I could possibly get attention, that's what I was trying to do. And... Um, Therefore, I got the mohawk, put the extensions in, and uh, off we went. And the veins on one side of my head represent that we all have good and bad in us. So in other words, one side of my head has clear, and the other side of my head has veins, which represents that we all have good and bad in us. Kind of like the, the Two-Face character for Batman. Exactly. Gotcha. <laughs> now, you would then go back to the WWF in 97 to manage Gold Dust. Right? Oh, and that was some sparkling times. I was working, um, I was about, um, I think I was 178 pounds. I'd really pumped up. And I was doing a show for uh, off of the Wild Samoan. It was an outdoor show, and Marlena had come. And the, the young man, I can't think of his name, he had just passed away. They were working, Marlena was working with him against Gold Dust. Oh, I can't think of his name right now. No, 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 no. He was a little bodybuilder guy. Anyway, excuse me, wrestling fans who know who I'm talking about. But um, they didn't know what they were going to do with the Gold Dust character because Marlena had been working with this young fellow, and he had passed. And um, so what? And Marlena is the one that took the idea to Jim Ross and. And um, and Vince McMahon and said you've got to see this girl. She's and she's she's not as big as China, but she's rough and ready to go, and she's wild. And 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 they had seen you know quite a bit of the Japanese stuff I had done. Uh, Dickie Slater had taken stuff up there, and I had mailed stuff up there from the Puerto Rican tours I had done, and and some and they had seen what I had done in the past, so. It was perfect for me and Goldust to be together. Right. Now, WrestleMania 14, you would then uh, be a part of another WrestleMania uh, you, with Goldust. And you, uh, you're in the corner, Merrill and Sable. What are your memories of that feud? Well, that was, I think I did a horrible thing for the wrestling business because Sable told me that she didn't have to learn to bump because she was going to be the next WWF champion. And the ABC's of pro wrestling is learning how to bump and to protect yourself and to distribute your weight properly so that you do not, uh, so that you can uh, injure yourself the least, to the least possible way by distributing your weight properly and the bumps are the ABC's of wrestling so 
um, when she told me that she didn't even have to learn how to bump and we were going into WrestleMania and then I was told by one of the road agents that she was going into Playboy and if I scratched or bruised her, I was going to lose my job. Now that's like telling somebody, you better go to the Super Bowl, but you can't catch a pass. So we went out there. She didn't have to take a bump. I took all the bumps for it. It's the first choreographed match I ever did in my whole life, for six weeks out. Um, I got her in the ring, and I taught her how to beat me up. Uh, and so that's the only choreographed match, and I don't know if I did a, a fault to professional wrestling at that time, because after that it seemed like they they brought the divas in, and it was Cat Fight City. And even though we did have our cat fighters of our of my era, um, there were still the professional lady wrestlers, and it seems like now all they want to see is TNA, and that's not all what it's about. When you see some of the girls that are working in um, in these independent shows that are outstanding wrestlers, Jamie, um, I can't think of her name, <laughs> ODB, ODB, and the, the awesome Kong. Uh, yeah, I'm Jamie. I can't think. She's from Windsor. She has wears the knee brace anyway. She she she's an awesome wrestler, and I see a lot of potential for her. And hopefully, Vince is going to open his eyes and start taking these women. They might not be petite little, tiny little, breakable bimbos, but they can wrestle. And it's about time that we get more women wrestlers out there in the ring. So it's needless to say, you have a a, a, a negative. I, guess, I don't want to put you on the spot at all, but a negative feeling toward uh, the WWE divas and Sable, and, and maybe you had a, a, a indirect, you know, way of changing the way women's wrestling is. I feel like I had an indirect way because she got in the ring. Uh, I got fired as I did so often, so very, very often. I got fired. I was the queen of the job squad. Um, Sable would forget the belt every time it was supposed to be dropped to me at the hotel room. So um, I was the queen of the job squad, and and um, she thought she could just wrestle anybody then. But then my little friend from Tennessee, Miss Texas, Jacqueline. God bless her. She's one of the toughest, hardest hitting women, and I love her for it. Because with her and I had the most awesome matches you could possibly have. Because when she hits you, she hits you. Well, she had about three matches with Sable before they were calling me back to go on the road with Sable. Because Sable wasn't going to take, gonna take <laughs> that stuff. And Jackie certainly wasn't going to certainly wasn't gonna hope, pull any punches. So... So, uh, any plans for you? Are, you? are you in the ring still? No, sir. I'm retired. I'm getting honored here at the Cauliflower Alley Club. I don't deserve it. I, I don't feel worthy. But it sure is, is, well, since I never did get that WWE title, it's nice just to get on, just to be looked at in this kind of way. Thank you for having me on your show today. Anytime. Luna Vasan right here on OWW Radio. <laughs> Oh, stay nasty. <laughs> OWW Radio.